Would the founders want our kids to d.e in school s. Hootings like Sandu Fay I doubt it. Amid all we know about the founding fathers, two things stand out in the wake of yet another mass shooting that underscores the desperate need for action and the depth of our paralysis. The first is that nearly a third of the 39 delegates who signed the Constitution endured the tragedy of losing children. By one count, 24 sons and daughters born to a dozen signers died before adulthood. The second is that these and the other founders were among the greatest change makers in history. They were America's first hash resist movement, and they fought in actual war to create a future unbound from the past. Does anyone think they would expect us to live by a 230 year old document? Would they stand by, reciting the centuries old Second Amendment, if their own children were endangered, in school, at malls, in movie theaters, on city streets? by easy access to guns? Or would they start us on the road to universal background checks, mandatory waiting periods and other steps most Americans say they want? Wherever these men are now, I envision them wringing their hands and muttering, even Antonin Scalia. No less an originalist than the late Supreme Court Justice wrote in the definitive Heller opinion that individuals have a right to own guns, but that governments have a right to reasonably regulate them. More on gun control. There's nothing and everything left to say more, here's what it was like to watch my friends die in room 1216, the founders could not anticipate the scale of social unrest, mental illness and religious extremism in a nation of nearly 328 million. They could not foresee how mass and social media would magnify those realities and in too many cases inspire gun violence. They did not know we would develop unimaginably devastating weapons of war and sell them to civilians. They didn't realize that the Second Amendment would lead to decades of political warfare. The original text proposed by James Madison read this way, The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, a well-armed and well-regulated militia being the best security of a free country but no person religiously scrupulous of bearing arms shall be compelled to render military service in person. The whole context of the amendment was always military, understood to refer to state militias, historian Gary Wills wrote in a 1995 analysis in the New York Review of Books. The last phrase does not appear in the slightly tweaked final version of the amendment, but in Wills' view, it clarified Madison's intent, when he accepted those with religious scruple. He made clear that bear arms meant wage war, no Quaker was to be deprived of his hunting gun. Retired Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens in 2014 suggested adding five words to make that explicit, a well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms when serving in the militia shall not be infringed. States pushed for the Second Amendment because, like other parts of the Constitution and by Eel of Rights, it was anti-royalist. In 1998, law professor Carl Bogus argued provocatively that Madison was aiming at least in part to reassure southern states that the federal government would not use its powers to disarm their militias, which they needed to control slaves. In 2008 came Heller, in which Scalia explicitly reaffirmed the individual right to bear arms but also said that weapons that are most useful in military service, M16 rifles and the like are not necessarily covered by the Second Amendment. We abolished slavery long ago, militias have turned into the National Guard, and estimates suggest Americans own millions of AR-15s that are modeled on M16s. It's a world light years beyond the ken of the founders. As brilliant as they were, they'd be the first to say that they and their blueprint for America were imperfect, limited by their experiences, their era, their differences, the difficult compromises they had to make. They bequeathed us infinite complications, not because they wanted to but because they could not see the future and because they had to in order to get the job done. More, danger in overreacting to Santa Fe school shooting more, no. There have not been 18 school shootings already this year policing the USA, a look at race, justice, media they were trying to solve problems, of empire and monarchy and, to some degree, inequity. If they were here now, maybe they would look at gun violence in America compared with gun violence in other countries, and feel an urgency too many politicians do not. 
so many of them suffered the death of a child, in many cases more than one. They would understand the kind of loss that shapes you, might even ruin you, for the rest of your life. Alexander Hamilton certainly would have gotten it. He isn't even on the list of framers who lost children because his son, Philip, didn't die until he was 19. And he died in a gun duel, just as his father would three years later. Never did I see a man so completely overwhelmed with grief as Hamilton has been, his college roommate Robert Troop wrote after Philip's death. John Adams probably would have understood as well. He was away in 1776 when his wife, Abigail, unilaterally decided to have a doctor inject her and their four children with live smallpox virus. The inoculation was controversial and dangerous, but not as dangerous as contracting smallpox. Abigail's bet paid off, her whole family, including John, who had been immunized in 1764, survived the smallpox epidemic then ravaging the Boston area. Does anyone doubt that this woman would be marching and lobbying if she were with us now and feared for her children? Abigail Adams memorably urged her husband in a 1776 litter to remember the ladies. The ladies have come far since then and continue to inch forward. If she were writing to him today, she might well be instructing him to remember the children. Jill Lawrence is commentary editor of USA Today and author of The Art of the Political Deal, How Congress Speed the Odds and Broke Through Gridlock. Follow her on Twitter, at Jill Lawrence.